My family will be impacted by the development of a coal terminal here in Oakland because my family already has heart issues and I know that most people wouldn't want such a thing in our neighborhood. Since 2013, developer Phil Tagami has been planning for the construction of an export terminal on city land in West Oakland. However, in 2015, it came to light that Tagami had plans to transport millions of tons of coal into the port of Oakland, sparking major controversy. When this proposed terminal for bulk uh, shipping, um, I supported Phil Tagami with a billion dollar city of Oakland contract, okay? And the thing I was looking for is jobs for the community. When he didn't start talking about shipping coal, we then organized quite a few folks, no coal in Oakland, leadership just sprung into action, got me involved. Um, 2016, we got a unanimous vote by the city council to ban coal. Since the coal ban, Tagami and the city have been entangled in a series of lawsuits. Oakland terminated Tagami's lease in 2016 over claims that he missed key construction milestones, which led to another round of lawsuits. A settlement seemed likely until recently when developers backed down negotiations, sending the case to trial. Phil Tagami's companies, Oakland Global and California Capital Investment, did not respond to interview requests about the trial. However, Environmentalists here have been warned that coal is back on the table. Uh, we understand and know that coal, um, it releases particles, specifically PM2.5, and that has many health impacts like neurological diseases, as well as lowering the birth weight of babies. What coal does can cause asthma, it can cause cancer. We now know that coal will damage your lungs. Once you learn better, you need to do better. For decades, community activist Margaret Gordon in the West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project has been monitoring West Oakland's air quality and pushing for the improvement of the city's environmental well-being. This area of the city is heavily impacted by pollution, being surrounded by three freeways, the Bay Bridge, and the Port of Oakland. The data shows is the diesel and the particulates and the black carbon and all those other things will get into your lungs get into your throat and eventually that stuff will narrow your constriction of your lung stems. So that's the science. Compared to other welfare areas, activists state that West Oakland, which primarily houses low-income people of color, will receive even more health risk if the terminal is built. Well, basically, folks up in the hills get a lighter pitch of dust mm. that will come their way. People here in the flatlands will get the more bulk of the dust, coal dust. So there's going to be a fight, an ongoing fight and incentives to make sure that we have, the, we have a right to have the same clean air that the people in the hills do. Even if this industry is here, we still have the right. Lifetime residents of West Oakland say they will continue to fight. And with every passing generation, a new group of young people are stepping up to join them. One of those groups is Youth versus Apocalypse. Some of the ways that Youth vs. Apocalypse is hoping to make sure there isn't a coal terminal in Oakland is by mobilizing our youth to even go to city council and talk to the representatives. We're also been putting our efforts into education and awareness because not a lot of people know that there were efforts to have a coal terminal in Oakland. And we just want to make sure that Oakland residents understand this because once there's public understanding, there could also be public pressure. Even if the developers win the trial and are able to build the terminal, the organizers from Youth vs. Apocalypse say they have zero plans on giving up. Youth vs. Apocalypse, we're determined to be on the front lines of this issue. Uh, we've been here since it started and we're going to continue advocating. Just come out here, say what's on your mind, speak for your community because people are listening and not many people are talking. So we need to make sure that there's representation for young people of color, low income, those who are facing so much that their voices are heard. So I would just encourage to come out here and there's a place for you and this work. For PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Lab and Youth Beat, I'm Liam Wadey in Oakland, California.